I want to introduce you to something that I've used all my woodworking life, 50 years of working with spoke shaves, but wooden spoke shaves are one of the most wonderful tools and I, I don't want anybody to ever dismiss them as being practical for today's woodworker. So I want to introduce a couple of them to you. I've got three or four here that I've made. You've got some with adjusters on, automatic, mm. easily, wing nut. Then you've got some that you tap and set with a hammer here and here. Uh, very fast, very effective, not old fashioned at all. They work really well. Um, but what I want to do is just to give you some idea of what you can do with them, I'm gonna just pop these out here like this. Just to get this down to a place where I can use one of the spoke shaves and show you how effective they are. So there I am, I've just got down to near to my depth. I'm creating a, an arch on a piece of furniture. I may have cut this on a bandsaw, that would be great. But you ultimately come to a point where the finish is not good enough. Do you sand it, do you spoke shave it? Let me give you an idea here of what these are particularly good at. So if I'm using this one, this one is one that I made. It's got one piece of steel, one piece of wood, four screws, and it really hits the spot. So I've got beautiful smooth here. So this would take care of your bandsaw marks, your sanding marks, and look how it works. And it is so smooth. You get almost zero friction when you're using this spoke shave and you end up with a perfect result. If you want to take the aris off, you take it off. Simple like this. Look at this, this is so exciting, so simple. So that's what that does. It's a wonderful tool and all the spoke shaves will give you the same results. Here's a piece of wood where I put a cove in here. This could be the end of a, uh, a dresser or something like that. Again, see that? All the marks, the undulations taken out and you can micro adjust these so simply. You know, you think that you have to have adjustment, but not necessarily so. See this spoke shave here is one of the earliest spoke shaves. It's got two tangs protruding through the body of the spoke shave. It's got the blade here. You can align this as you might think it is like a plane. You tap this, tap this, eyeball through from one side to the other to see if it's even. But most of these spoke shaves were actually used in an uneven state. So you tap this end, and what you get when you put the spoke shave to the wood here, here I've got a heavy cut, but when I go to this side, I've got a very light pass, so I can work in between. So if I wanted to put a heavy chamfer on here, like this, on a table leg or something like that, I take the bulk of it off on the heavy set side, then I go to this side, and I refine it, and that's the same for all these spoke shapes. Heavy set one side, shallow set the other, infinite variability, all the way through from heavy to very fine. If you want a, a stop chamfer, let's say we wanted to put a stop chamfer on here. This is something that we don't do too often these days. That means that the chamfer here to here stops here. What we do with this, take your spoke shave again, which one shall I use? I'll use this one. We go in here, we take it down, then we go in, how can you see this? Um, I don't think you can, let me see. I go in this side, and there I've got my stop chamfer, so it comes in gradually here. Let me just ink those edges in so you can see. That's how you create a stop chamfer. That's another technique. What about if you wanted to make a walking stick or a dowel or something like that? Here's another wonderful method. Let me go to, which one? This one, this is one I've made. This is an adjustable one. And you adjust this in a different way. So you pull this at 45 degrees. 
work down the length. Now, often you'll have one that has a heavy set, like I might take this one that we had before with the heavy set, take off that corner, and then refine that with another spoke shave. So you can do that too. So you work around here, work around the corners, and in not very long, you have this nice radius. So this could be a bull nose on a stair tread. It could be the uh, window sill with a round over on the edge. But if you go to all four corners, keep turning it round and you take off that corner, just like I said, look at this. It just peels away like peeling potatoes. Get the bulk of it off with a heavy set and then refine it with a finer spoke shape. So I'm already ahead of you because you're still looking for your router bits and I'm already halfway there. So there's my bull nose to the stair tread, the bull nose for the windowsill, a little bit of scraping, a little bit of sanding, and that's what I would do. If you don't want to go to that much trouble of making a spoke shave or buying one, you can just take a piece of three quarter inch by one inch, uh, one and a half inch piece of wood and put a blade into it, make your own blade, very simple, very quick, and uh, add that to it because you don't actually need the shaping. This would be the poor man's spoke shave. It's one I've made and I would use this without hesitation on anything that I'm working on. It's just when you're working long term with a, with a, uh, a tool, you want this fits here, this fits right on the side of your fingers, your thumbs go on this side, that gives you direct punchiness into the wood. It's perfect. These are different methods that we use for working with our wood. There are so many other things that I could tell you about the spoke shave, but I think this will get you started. You will enjoy working with these tools just as I have for the last five decades. Wonderful tools. Don't dismiss wooden spoke shaves.